Oh, got rained out. Butter is soaked, drenched, straight up to the bone. That's why I got my nipples out. So, anyway, headed home, waiting on God, as I have been for the last year and a month. Been a year and a month waiting on all of this. And I keep getting a prophetic word like today. I got Ezekiel 12, where it talks about the prophecies and how the prophets are known to have um, prophesied and that there's always delay and let that let that saying die and it's always for a later time there will be no more delay I've been getting that since December but anyway I'm going to believe again for it that it is very very soon and uh when that all comes to be, I don't know why specifically I'm on here. Holy Spirit, speak through me, guide my speech, direct me as it were, as you will. Talk about whatever it happens to be that is of interest to you, because I don't know. So apparently I'm just on here documenting. As the entirety of last year was what God spoke. So to reiterate, to repeat, it's been a year and a month. I go that God told me to run for Honolulu mayor. So Mayor Rick Blangiardi seems to be the mayor right now, but he's just warming my seat. He is the interim from his administration to a muscle administration. And uh, as to how, there's one option, I guess, that has been long and waiting, but it's only the hand of God that brings it about. And I have confirmation after confirmation, Bathsheba going to David and know different scriptures that talk about well this king is on the throne didn't you say god that this one would be the one solomon specifically in that verse and you know other sections of scripture were talks about like with daniel and i don't know scripture well enough those that know me know this that i don't have the memory that i would like to be able to say this is the book the chapter this is the verse specifically but he sends me to specific verses where it talks about like with daniel he removes kings and he sets other ones up and that is the end all, if you will, of where all this ends. Could have said that different. Anyway, he said, run for mayor. He said, president in eight years. And then amidst that, I have the kingdom of Hawaii that I'm supposed to speak on and will. So help me God all the days of my life. And however you facilitate that, only the hand of God knows. Only the mind of God knows. I don't know if in two years I'm supposed to run for governor. If that's going to advance it that much more to a better and fuller extent. I don't know. The legality of it all, I have no clue. And uh, I got concrete in my hair. The, uh, the particulars and the details in a lot of ways, it's like, you know, I don't even know what I'm able to do. God, you sent me in this position. You've, you've put me here waiting. And when it finally happens, I'm going to have a lot of details that I'm short on. And it's going to be widely known and very public that I have a part of a plan that is not my own. And that's where the dependence on God comes in. And that is the bumpers, if you will, in way of bowling to keep me in in my uh, my place of desperation and saying, God, you're going to have to do it because I have no clue how. I'll speak on it. I'll do whatever you know, or whatever you've told me to do that I know. But how specifically, only God knows. So I guess that's the idea. Let me get back in frame. I guess that's the idea is that it's like, okay, this guy has no plan and is very obvious and very clear that past this certain point of the details he's given today he doesn't know but tomorrow he has more details you know and that didn't come from thin air that came from the mind of god and the hand of god over him so again personally there's many things that he's spoken the the purpose of it all i guess is to engender interest cultivate interest to create interest from people that witness my life and say, I want that. I want to be whatever the version is that I need to be, that God has created me to be. He is that because God spoke it. And that's the only way that he became that because God spoke it. I wonder what God has for my life. And in a previous life, because that's what it feels like, everything with my marriage, the version of who I was before, a lot of that stuff feels completely dead because to a degree it is was or it is you know i have 
certain interests and certain things about me, obviously, that still live. You know, still hunting and fishing. That's been one of the largest distractions that I've had during this time and waiting is he's given me the ability to go and enjoy certain things, you know, because otherwise I, you know, talk about as far as losing my mind, I felt like it many, many times, and that's a day-to-day -day thing. It's like when you get told you're gonna be president, which he spoke to me about before he even said anything about running for mayor. And I'm like, president of what? I'm trying to start a Bible study here and you're talking to me about president. President of a ministry, president of what specifically? Not president of the United States. But you get told that by a God you cannot see in a voice that you know is not your own. And you kind of wonder, am I all there? You know, that still small voice within you. The voice of God, the Holy Spirit. It's like, okay, president of what? President of a ministry? Okay, I can see that. What, what is the name of this ministry? What am I going to start? What, you know, so when he talks about later, like last month, last week, or one last month, talking about how you're going to have a ministry that is uh, similar to TBN, Trinity Broadcast Network, but it's going to be in a lot of ways, different prophets and different apost um, apostles, you know, because you largely have the five, um, what do you call it? Five fold ministry that is stifled. You have pastors and you have teachers, you know, and you have three others that are not represented. It's like this is the form of the church, and you guys are missing more than half. So you wonder why you have no clue what God's doing because it says He does nothing without revealing it first to the prophets. Some of you teach that God does not speak aside from the Bible, or I wonder, this sounds arrogant, it's just what it happens to be must be on the mind of God and that's the thing that I always have to to wonder and ask is like how much of this is me just saying this because I have angst or an agitation with certain people that I trusted in a previous season that didn't have the answers that I thought they would have pastors that say you know well you're not qualified to speak of those things or pray for those things because we're not disciples such as casting out demons you know praying to heal cancer it's like well we just prayed over my grandmother who has it so why is it any different if I pray it than if you initiate the prayer he gave us authority why is it why is it that we don't have authority and it says specifically that he did he has given us authority to trample on snakes and scorpions so you're a pastor and yes I have a certain history and a feeling towards you God forgive me God help me but there's a lesson there there's a reason why i had to go through that to see that a lot of people that say stuff really I either don't know or don't believe and that's another thing that i've seen it's like you say god can do this but you don't believe when i say that you know it's not that you don't believe god it's that you don't believe me i understand that because when god says what he says as far as being a mayor or being a president or being any of this other stuff i don't question him i question me that's where it all becomes but you, that that's the issue that i have you know, but it's the same thing in a different way with Satan in the garden telling Eve, you know, that God's keeping something from you to truly know good from evil in these things. You will be like God in these ways. That is the purpose to be like God, but not to disobey it. So if he says something that I am to be or that is within me already, because like educate, the, the word means to cultivate from within. It's already in you. It's like a seed. Everything, the talent the gifts that he's given you, the histories, the soul experiences that he's given you all have the ability to be what he's said, but you have to want it. You have to obey. You have to train. You have to be disciplined. You know, all of these things to actually get to that point. And it, it involves him, obviously, because it's his will. But it's like, you know what? You cannot fail if you're obeying what he tells you to do. You have the backing of heaven. You, that is the will of God, that you would do what he created you to do. So you cannot fail. Sure, you can trip, you can slip up in different ways, but overall, if you're obeying what he tells you to do, you cannot fail. When I hear that kind of stuff, it's like, you know what, I don't feel this. Well, it's like, okay, well, when God met with Adam in the garden, what did he say? After he asked him, where are you? He already knew where he was. He already knew what had happened. But he said, when Adam told him, we clothed ourselves because we were naked, what did God say? Who told you? Who told you you were naked? How do you know what that means? Who told you? And it's the same thing with any lie that Satan will tell you. Who told you you 
couldn't do? Who told you you weren't enough? Who told you you weren't worthy of this? Who told you? And I can feel a certain kind of way, obviously. It's only natural, it's only expected. I don't know when, and I've said this, I don't know how many different times, the insecurity, the humility. When God says this over you, it seems very presumptive. It does. And it's like, okay, well, it's the same thing with coming to him. I don't deserve this, but this is what you say. To rule and reign with Christ himself, then, yeah. I feel shame. I feel naked. I feel afraid. I feel insecure. I feel all these things. But if he says this is what I am to be and this is what I qualify for by the grace of God, through Christ Jesus, then I simply have to believe and walk in that. And it's not my ability. In my weakness, he is strong. All these things. All these things. But it's like, okay, all right, God, I believe. That's what, that's what it comes down to. It's that simple. God, I believe. And simple does not mean easy. It means it's not complicated. Doesn't mean it's easy. You got like one, one direction. Believe. Believe that he is who he says he is. Believe that when he says he will not abandon you, he will not abandon you. Believe that he is the resurrector of the dead. Believe that he is the way, the truth, and the life. That he is faithful. That what he says will come to pass. Sometimes very differently than what you would expect, and I've I've experienced all of that. You know, there's a sermon I was listening to talking about he's a healer. He's one who resurrects people from the dead. He's a provider. You know, and it goes on with all the things that he is, and it says, but that's not all he is. He is all these things. So with me, a deliverer. But that's not all he is. Know, and I've come to know him in different ways that I never knew him before. And that's, you know, when you experience him in those ways, it's like, you know what, you're going to interpret the Bible in a totally different way because you have his knowing and his spirit within you that knows and resonates and speaks to all these different facets of his character and his nature. And he's so much more than can be comprehended or appreciated. He can't even speak of being appreciated. But in understanding better it allows you to appreciate better and it's the same thing with knowing yourself and loving your neighbor as yourself and being able to understand yourself better it allows you to love yourself better and what does it say love God with all your heart soul and mind and love your neighbor as yourself if you don't truly know who you are and all that you are made to be and appreciate the things that God made you whether you're that today or you're going to be that tomorrow in a different way or a, uh, a greater way, more and more from glory to glory, as it says. But in seeing that, seeing the beauty that he has given you, or the lack of and the want and the desire that he's given you to be everything that he wants you to be, and lessening yourself and allowing him to fill you, as it says, he is greater than I. I must, incre I must decrease so he must increase. These kind of things. You become more like God. And that's the point. The confidence that I'll have that is being cultivated and grown and, and the same with faith, you know, it's like, I feel like I'm holding my breath because I am, I am. And there's times that I feel like I'm fainting, physically, spiritually, in every single way. But God, I go all in, I throw everything I have at you, I'm loving you with my heart, soul, and mind, everything that I am, everything that I understand or don't. He's going to make up the difference. That's what he promised me. There's nothing I can do to make this happen. Absolutely nothing. But for whoever you happen to be, whether I'm speaking to you now as a mayor, a president, or a king, or a husband and a father, and I am all those things. I may not feel like any of those things right now, but I am all those things. It's just been spoken from the beginning of time, and the same with you. The same with you. You got to go to him and you got to find out what it is specifically that he said. There's going to be different people that can speak and impart into your life. But I'm finding that a lot of people that grew up with you, like it says, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country. The people that know you the best, supposedly, are the ones that cannot get past your history. And they limit you. And if you're going to be modified by, God forbid, the expectation is or the lack of expectations from you. It's a limitation is what it is. 
So yes, there's those that know you and then there's those that think that they know you and they seek to limit you by way of jealousy and different spirits. Like you had with Joseph and his brothers, like you had with David and his brothers. All of that stuff is, <laughs> has been learned in different ways and experienced in different ways over the last year, even from family members and, and just different betrayals in certain ways that I never, never expected. The divorce is just the beginning of all of that in a very real, very real way. Never, never in a million years expected that. Love of my life. Anyway, y'all didn't ask about that. Whoever you happen to be, go to God. He has countless blessings. And if you get a blessing too soon, sometimes it's a curse. But what may seem like a curse sometimes is a blessing at the same time. So all of that said, it's all part of the process in growing a relationship with him. Whoever you happen to be, go to him. Ask him. Yes, people can impart and speak into your life in different ways, but you got to go to him because he's the one that made you. He's the one that knows you. But whoever you happen to be, I used to be very judgmental in, in certain ways. In a lot of ways, I still am. But my hope is, is to be everything that he wants me to be. And in doing that, you got to have the heart of God and the mind of God. And that is one of love, encouragement, um, correction at times because it said that that's not that's not without because as it says those he loves he corrects so i'll end with that that'll look like god only knows what but whoever you happen to be go to god i promise you he has only the best in mind for you